It is important uh, to let students know what's expected of them and then use those criteria that you've laid out in advance as the actual basis of assigning the achievement grades. So that's why rubrics serve that purpose. Uh, if you establish not just what the criteria are, but the levels of achievement that you will be expecting so that you have these nine things will be looked at and you can achieve at one or, one or two, three or four different levels, uh, then students can determine how to best allocate their effort when they complete the assignment. Uh, if you're not going to count grammar, they don't have to waste time fixing the grammar stuff. But if you are, then let, that, let them be known in advance that that's one of the criteria. From my experience, it's absolutely essential for all online learners to really understand how to be successful from the beginning before they even begin an essay assignment or a discussion. So I implement this in the planning phase and carry it through a course by providing a rubric that they can see and study before they approach an assignment. And then I use that to grade their work and give them f really detailed feedback um, where they can see each specific part and what they need to improve on. And I'm often a fan of allowing students to submit up to two or three times so that they really hit that mark of perfection. I think there's a danger of getting too big of a rubric going or too many details. So trying to keep it to a couple standards that students can really um, understand quite well. If there's too many things going on, it tends to be distracting. Rubrics came along 15 years ago as a way of, of defining for students clearly the expectations and the criterion by which they will be evaluated. Uh, they can be used very effectively or they can be used in ways which are limiting and restrictive. Uh, what I find most important about rubrics is that when students have a general idea of the broad criteria under which they will be graded and yet still have enough latitude to be individualistic and apply their own intellect and creativity, then the rubric serves a very valuable purpose. For example, I like to have as a rubric well organized, but I don't want to limit that to saying there's a good topic sentence, there's a, there's a great transition between paragraphs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What I really want students to do is to think about the overall organization of their, of their written work and then organize it in a way that they find most logical. I always ask students to write for other students rather than to write for me. And I think that makes it, if I have other students reading their work and, and commenting on it, that makes it much more meaningful to the students. The use of uh, model assignments, exemplary work, to, 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 allow, to give students some idea of what you expect, I have found to be, in general, a bad idea, not a good idea. For one thing, it sets up in the students the belief that you expect them to follow a certain format. And while that's okay in some assignments, in other assignments you want students to be very creative. You'd rather see what they can produce rather than what they can mimic. So for that reason, I tend not to provide model assignments. Uh, and some professors do that as a routine. I also find it objectionable to provide study guides to students. And kind of for the same reason, study guides direct students to the content to look for answers and ignore the bigger picture or, or not pay too much attention to the, the, the forest, just look for the trees. So the, the use of study guides, the use of model assignments, I find restricts student intellect and creativity. On the downside, the more clearly you articulate expectations, the less freedom you give the students. Uh, Online design, course design, has matured. We've gone from a concern with pedagogy and we've passed through a concern for andragogy, which is adult learning, into, into what I call hudagogy. And hudagogy emphasizes the ability of students to determine and to direct their own path of learning. So that you let the students, to the most extent possible, make decisions which impact what they learn, how fast they learn it, uh, what topics they find most relevant, they get to choose, etc. So anytime you restrict 
the hedagogical uh, limitations of a course, then you're kind of boxing the student into your design and your pathway of learning rather than giving them that freedom. And so I feel for adult learners, learning is much more meaningful if it is intrinsically motivated uh, by their own interests and their own relevance and their own concerns and applications. And so I try to find ways of letting them express that in all of the assignments I give. Thank you.